Hello everyone, I am 3F John, and welcome back to another part of my Bloodborne playthrough. Last time we ran through and we opened up a couple little shortcuts, and this time we're going to continue on running around Central Yarnum before making our way to the, back to the Great Bridge and trying to go through to the Cathedral Ward. And I have turned down the audio effects a little bit because I know in the last video... Oh, oh no, god, that was bad. <laughs> stupid fucking light pole. Um, I know in the last video, sometimes it gets a little hard to hear me with the sound effects being up. So we're gonna go down this way first. And kill a couple of trolls before making our way even farther. Oh, and that visceral attack did not kill him. Okay. Well, he's down now, and that's what matters, right? Now, if I remember my first playthrough, yeah, we cannot go this way yet. But we will be able to. Hopefully by the end of this video. If not, I'm going to have to put out three parts to get through Central Yarnum. So, first things first, let's go back and open this door. This goes back into the dark room that we saw earlier. And now it just gives us kind of a straight through if we want to get around that, uh... Those trolls down there. Yeah, so you remember this guy? Give me them quick silver bullets. Alright. I still hear a troll out there somewhere. I also just felt my house shake. That's a little odd, but I assume it's just my neighbors. That was weird. Felt like the ground below me was shaking. I do live in Oklahoma, though, and if y'all know anything about Oklahoma, you know that we get real bad earthquakes around here lately. So it could always be one of those. He hit me. Oh, what a bastard. More cold blood do, so we can get some more blood echoes here in a little while. Alright, so this person is asking us for a safe place to go. Um, we don't actually have any safe places right now, but we will come back and check up on this person here in a little while. And, um, you know, maybe if we find a safe place, um, we can send them there, we can go send Gilbert there, we can go get Isefka and her patients and go... We can all, all go find a safe place to spend part of the hunt. I am, however, going to go through here for right now. And before I do anything else, let's go ahead and turn that volume up just a hair. I can't hear anything. So if this is too loud, then I apologize. You know, you can't hear the sound of my voice over the sound of the noises in the game. Um, Getting audio balanced out on a PC free capture card is definitely going to be a trial and error. And here we meet another person in the city of Yarnum. Oh, a hunter, are you? And an outsider? What a mess you've been caught up in. And tonight of all nights. Here. To welcome the new hunter. 
bold hunter's marks. Prepare yourself for the worst. There are no humans left. They're all flesh-hungry beasts now. So, this person here says there are no humans left. We know that that is objectively bullshit, because we've met a few. We met Isefka, we met Gilbert, we met that person back there that was asking for a safe place, and we ignored them and walked away. We've met humans left, so uh, Plague Doctor Mask here is a fucking liar, but let's see what else they have to say. Still lingering about. What's wrong? A hunter unnerved by a few beasts. No matter. Without fear in our hearts, we're a little different from the beasts themselves. And she's given us the shake off cape gesture. So we'll just. We'll find one and I'll show you what it is. Here we go. Boop. Yeah, that, that's it right there. We don't really have much of a cape at the moment. She's got a pretty sweet one, though. But uh, we don't really have one, so. This is all we really do. <laughs> but we will continue our way around here in Central Yarnum before we make our way to go and find the Cathedral Ward. I forgot what I was talking about there for a moment. That, that'll happen from time to time. I'm not stupid, I promise. I just sometimes forget what I was going on about. So if that's everything for this area, let's just go ahead and drop down a little bit. Um, let's find a good place to drop down, because I see something down there. Just in case you guys can't see, I'll whip the torch out for right now. Um, let's drop down right here. Oh, that hurt. Oh my god. You little dinkhead. I drop down and I get shot. It's like he knew I was above him the whole time. Alright, we got one over there. We got one right here. There's one right there. So we're going to... The only good chance we have of beating these guys is using visceral attacks. Otherwise, they're going to wreck my shit. And not in the fun way. Though, that attack was pretty easy to see coming. He did, homie. He did. <laughs> Alright, let's keep moving. Let's get this one down here. All his buddies up there and can't do nothing for him. Hey, you. Oh, wow, that doesn't break. Yeah, a big part of this game is getting that visceral attack timing down. If you can't do that, you're going to be in a world of hurt. With these guys, though, they're fairly predictable. Just right as they're about to swing, let them draw back, and right as they're about to take that swing, just pop them in the face with a gun. Just like that, they go down. Is there stuff over here anywhere? Um, Alright. No, there. I guess there isn't. Alright, we'll keep moving on through here. It's two guys with guns. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, no. Oh no, unlock. Panic roll, panic roll. That's what that's called, is the panic roll. Oh 
But we... Oh, man. Come on. Go down. Go down. There we go. He's down. I did not see him sneak up behind me. That was something else, man. Uh, that's a good way to get the blood flowing when you're getting ready trying to give some commentary on a game. Have somebody jump up and sneak up on you like that. Cold blood do. And if you're wondering what we're doing, we're just clearing out, you know, part of the city before we go on and try to make our way across the Great Bridge to the Cathedral Ward. Don't want to leave too many stones unturned. I apologize if I stop talking in the middle of my sentences sometimes. I got, haven't gotten any of my stomach's crowd. I'm trying to make sure that it's not making its way into the microphone. All right. There's something right there. Okay, that was a bird. I just don't know where he was. What the shit? Bloodstone shards. Well, where is he? I hear him. He's obviously very, very pissed off at the moment, but I just don't know where he is. Okay, nothing down here. Um, what's down over here? A bunch of boats and a canal. I think this is the stuff I knocked down earlier. Oh, that's a rat. Come on. Fairly easy to take down. Pull our light back out. Madman's knowledge. Alright, this is important, so let's make sure nobody's coming and let me explain this. Madman's knowledge. Skull of a madman touched by the wisdom of the Great Ones. Used to gain insight. Making contact with Eldritch Wisdom is a blessing, for even if it drives one mad, it allows one to serve a grander purpose for posterity. So basically, a couple of things here. Um, touched by the wisdom of the Great Ones. Now, if you're familiar with the work of H.P. Lovecraft, which this game is partly inspired by, then you kind of get the idea. The Great Ones are gods, in a sense. They are above us in the grand scheme of things. And our ability to comprehend anything about them is little to none. And so, you know, making contact with the Eldritch Wisdom is a blessing, even if it drives you mad. And that's kind of what you can see from the skull there. The skull is cracked open and something is coming out of it. Um, and then it says, you know, used to gain insight. And I'll explain what that is here in a moment. The point is, there is something called the Great Ones in this game. They're wise, they're above our heads, they're, they're more powerful than us, we can barely even comprehend what they are, and just coming into contact with their eldritch knowledge is enough to drive someone mad. So we're going to use this real quick. Boop! And now you see the top right uh, corner of the screen, there's an eyeball, and next to it is the number one. That is our insight meter. Now, insight, the more we gain of it, uh, parts of the game will change. And the more we gain, the more changes there are. And you get insight for a number of different tasks. But for right now, we only have the one. And you can gain insight, and you can also lose insight. And the more insight you get, the more mad you begin to go. So, when you get frenzied, which is a status later that we'll see later in the game, when you, you are more susceptible to being frenzied when you have more insight. 
but for right now that's all we have so that's another thing we need to figure out we need to figure out how to stop the the plague we need to figure out what the pale blood is and now we need to figure out what the great ones are and how do they tie into all of this so we've definitely got a lot on our plate and the first thing we need to do is figure out how to get to the Grand Cathedral. But for right now, we're going to continue to clear out Central Yarnum. And then we will move on to the Great Bridge and try to make our way to the Cathedral Ward. I have to figure out where I'm supposed to be down here. This obviously is not the right area. Alright, so this puts us above where we just were. Oh! And that rat fell down there. The saw spear. Oh god. This is almost bad. Throwing knives. Uh, throwing knife is what it exactly what it sounds like. It's a knife, and you can throw it. Of course, our character here um, doesn't have the greatest throw ever. I'm not sure if you noticed that earlier with the Molotov cocktails. But let's see. Oh, we'll just put it in this one, and then we'll put this one here. The saw spear. What are the trick weapons of the workshop, commonly used by those who dedicate themselves to the hunt? This saw, effective at drawing the blood of spear, the blood of spears, the blood of beast, transforms into a medium-range spear. The saw, with its set of bloodletting teeth, has become a symbol of the hunt and only grows in its effectiveness the more grotesquely transformed the beast. And you can see it's kind of a serrated weapon, and it upgrades with skill. So we are definitely going to be using it throughout this playthrough. It's one of my personal favorite weapons in the game. Oh man, my stomach is really growling today. And it's serrated. And serration does way more damage to beast than just poking them with a the stick does. So this will be one of our main weapons throughout this playthrough. We're going to go back up and around real quick. Sorry, but we got to do this because we got to figure out what fell on the other side of the canal down here when I was cutting stuff off of the... Cutting stuff that was hanging down from there. And look at that. Look at how much more damage it does just right off the bat. And we get swinging moves. We get overhead, you know, overhead and coming down. Oh, there you are. And we get a nice little poke. So yeah, this very important weapon. Now what? This is the other body I cut down. Bloodstone shards. Cool. We use those to upgrade this weapon here in a little bit. And I'm going to keep the threaded cane for now because I might need the range later on. Let's go ahead and put our... Okay, I got to mess with this real quick. Oil urn. Molotov cocktail. Throwing knife. R oh, no, rocks. There we go. And an oil urn. I'm not sure when I picked that up and if I talked about it, but if I didn't... It is a jar full of oil. You douse it on people, and then you set them on fire. It's kind of like throwing gasoline on somebody at the pump because they're coming by and asking you questions when you're just trying to fill up your car. So you just douse them with gasoline and then burn them real quick. Same basic concept here. Alright, so we can drop back down one more time. And now we're ready to keep moving on through this area.
Oh, yeah, that's the way we went. So, we want to go... around. I knew that. That that was just a test. I was testing you guys to see if you've been paying attention. Uh, congratulations. You passed. Oh, that's a... not dead bird. Or that is a dead bird. Alright, um... Oops. Well, that hurt a little bit. Yeah, that that right there is bait. And, um... We're actually going to go up this set of stairs first. And then we'll come back down to this area here in a little bit. But I want to find out what's up here. hear a troll. Ow, you bastards. Quit! I do not want to die to a bird. That would just be embarrassing. There we go. Found some more rocks. And another madman's knowledge, so we'll gain another point of insight, which brings us closer to understanding what's really going on here in Yarnum. Boop. Oh, hello. Sorry about that, y'all. My dog was messing with me. <laughs> oh, that didn't work. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Panic rolls. There we go, he's down. Motherfucker was swinging a statue at me. Like, it, it brings a... kind of a whole new meaning to I'm gonna beat a motherfucker with another motherfucker. <laughs> um, is there somebody here? Yes, there is. Yeah, like I said, most of the people in this city aren't very nice, and they're not very helpful. But we'll go ahead and unlock this door real quick. This brings us back through to here, where that other troll was down there, and the dogs, and then the bridge is right there, and yeah, you guys get it. So we need to figure out how we can get back to the lamp and spend some of our blood echoes. Oh, but I have it. The bold hunter's mark. Dangling upside down, rune etched in the mind of a hunter. The image upon this parchment allows one to envision the rune with clarity. Allow us a hunter to awaken again without losing blood echoes, a trick that seems nearly too good to be true. So we're going to use one of these, and it will take us back to our lamp. And here we are, back at our lamp in Central Yarnum. So we're going to go check on the hunter's dream, and use some of these blood echoes we've accrued to buy more equipment. Alright, we're back here in the Hunter's Dream. And as you can see, some things are a little different. Our abandoned doll is no longer abandoned, and there's a few messengers that would like to speak with us. This happened because we got insight. So, like I said, insight changes the way the game plays. Let's see what the doll has to say. Hello, good hunter. I 
am a doll here in this dream to look after you. Honorable hunter, pursue the echoes of blood, and I will channel them into your strength. You will hunt beasts, and I will be here for you to embolden your sickly spirit. So, the doll gives us the ability to channel blood echoes and upgrade our character, and that's what we're going to do. Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. Let me stand close. Now shut your eyes. And so here we are. We started at level 10 with the way that we built our character, and we have a lot of stuff that we are going to need. We're going to start with Vitality, because holy crap is that low. Our skill is already at 15, which is decent enough for the starting game. And we're going to get our Arcane up, because we're going to use that as well. And so, we'll level up. And what level are we now? Hold on. Sorry. We're now level 15. We were able to level up five times, because we never died from the start of the game till now. Farewell, good mate. And so, we have another gift. Consume insight and ring the beckoning bell to enlist the cooperation of hunters from other worlds. Uh, so this is a online mechanic. Silencing blanks. Silencing blanks. Yeah, that's it. Silencing blanks and such forms of cooperation. And so that's an online mechanic that allows us to summon other hunters to help us out if we get stuck. Which we probably won't be doing. However, consume insight and ring the old hunter bell to enlist the cooperation of old hunters. The old hunter's bell allows us to summon NPCs who are characters in the game at certain spots to help us if we're stuck somewhere. And we may do that early on with one of them. Oh god, his leg is funny looking on that stair. But we may do that early on to help us with one. We may do that every now and then to help us with a boss, but you know, it just kind of depends on how I'm feeling when we get to the boss or if the boss has been giving me any trouble. Now this little workshop here, this allows us to fortify our weapons. You can see the ones hanging up on the wall as kind of the, hey, come over here, fix your weapons. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to use some of those bloodstone shards that we got to upgrade our saw spear. And I can only upgrade it to a plus one right now, but that's not that big of a deal. So. I just need more blood echoes, yeah. Well, thankfully for me, I have all these cold blood dews. And look at that, we can upgrade it. Oh, yeah, he's doing a little gesture there. Upgrade it again. So now it's at plus two, and it does 101 damage, and next time we upgrade it, it'll do 109. And you can upgrade both your right-handed and left-handed weapons, depending on what they are. And Gearman is nowhere to be found right now. Which is typical of our mentor. He is, um... Well, I was going to give him the excuse to say he's a busy man, but he's kind of stuck here in this dream, so... No, he just disappears from time to time. But we still have the doll, who is kind of a odd friend to have. And I wonder if she knows if Garman told us we could, quote-unquote, use her. So, see yeah, if we have enough blood echoes to level up one more time. Very well, let me... And we do, so... Uh, let's get Vitality up one more time. Farewell, mate. So now we're level 16. So I'm going to make my way back to Central Yarnum, and we are going to go try and cross that great bridge here in just a moment. So I'll see you here after the flash. Alright, and I'm back. So, 
I mentioned a moment ago that we could use the old hunter's bell to summon NPCs, and I figured I'd go ahead and do that once so you guys could see exactly what it does before we go and try and cross the Great Bridge. So, we're going to summon Father Gascoigne. And this does take a second, so just be patient, bear with me. And there he is, Father Gascoigne. He's gonna, he's kind of a big old one, isn't he? Holy crap. He's like a whole head taller than me. But he's going to help us try and cross the bridge up here to make our way to the Cathedral Ward. Yeah, there he is. And I've already cleared out the way. That way you don't just have to watch us kill a whole bunch of fucking nobodies real quick before we try to open our way to the Cathedral Ward. And he makes it hard as hell to see. Come on, dude. Where are you going? There he is. So Father Gascoigne is another old hunter, and he's going to be a little bit of help to us here in just a moment. But there's the door to the Cathedral Ward, so let's just make our way over there. And it's not going to be as easy as it looks. Dude, you're blocking my way. Okay. So we throw our oil, and we throw our Molotovs, and we don't miss. And we get a visceral attack, and we get a shitloads of damage right off the bat. We just keep throwing Molotovs, and try not to get hit. Miss. Of course we miss. miss. Now, like the game Dark Souls, the objective here is get behind them and hit them. Seems like throwing knives. Oh. Yeah, he likes throwing knives. Oh, that hurt. Let's see if we can't get around behind him real quick. So this is the Cleric Beast. If you can't tell by the name. He's the first mini-boss in the game. We have to take him down. One, because we should, because he's a mini boss. And because he's a beast, and our job as hunters is to hunt beasts. But we should also take him down, because he's blocking the door to the Cathedral Ward. And he's gonna go down without too much relative fucking trouble. Father Gascoigne, you and I make a pretty good team. And he's not going to stick around. He's going to go ahead and bang out, kick rocks, all that good stuff. So, so much for my good team. But, um, hopefully we have a chance to run into Father Gascoin again here in a little bit. Seemed like a good teammate to have. So we got some quick silver bullets. We've got a lamp here. And we gained some insight. One, from running into the boss. If you find a boss in this game, you gain insight. And defeating a boss will also gain you insight. But it looks like our gate here is shut, and the door doesn't open. So the way to the Cathedral Ward is blocked off, just like we saw in that note earlier. When the hunt begins, the uh, Healing Church left everybody. They abandoned them and shut the way to the Cathedral Ward. So that's kind of a problem. But when we killed the Cleric Beast, we got the Sword Hunter Badge. One of the badges crafted by the Healing Church. This silver sword is a symbol of a church hunter. 
Ludwig was the first of many healing church hunters to come, many of whom were clerics. As it was, clerics transformed into the most hideous beast. And so, we can safely assume, lore-wise, that the beast we just killed there was a cleric at one point, hence the name Cleric Beast. So even hunters are prone to the infections, even the healing church itself. The people who came up with blood ministration, the people who figured out the secret of the magic old blood, they're susceptible to it just like everybody else is. And we can't get past the healing, or we can't get past the bridge here to find the healing church, so we're going to have to figure out another way. So, let's go back and let's go ask our friend Gilbert, see what he knows. Alright, and we're back. Back here at Gilbert's little window. So, the way to the healing church is blocked off, or the way to the cathedral ward where the healing church hangs out. It's, it's blocked off. They closed it, they've abandoned the people, and the cleric beast, even defeating it, didn't open the door. So, maybe Gilbert has another idea. Yes, I see. But the great bridge is the only way to the cathedral ward. And during the hunt, the bridge is closed. Hmm. You could try the aqueduct. There's a rather, how shall I put it, powerful area south of the great bridge. From there, an aqueduct leads to the cathedral ward. <coughs> Not a place you'd normally want to visit, but I don't imagine you have much of a choice, do you? So that's that. Gilbert says we need to go and find the aqueduct, the sewers that we were in earlier where we found this sweet-ass saw spear. Yeah, we're gonna have to go back down there and see if there's a way to get in the cathedral ward from there. Alright, so we're back. And we're gonna make our way down into the aqueduct, like Gilbert told us to, but before we go, we have found another little window here that we need to check in on. Alright, so this little girl wants us to find her mother because her dad never came back from the hunt. She's given us a tiny music box to give to her mom. It plays one of Daddy's favorite songs. And when Daddy forgets us, we play it for him so he remembers. Mom's so silly for him off without it. Alright, so she wants us to go find her mom and her dad. Her mom her dad went out to the hunt and never came back, and her mom went out to find him. She has a red jeweled brooch that apparently we can't miss, and she's given us this little music box that plays a song so when daddy forgets them it reminds him who he is uh, if that doesn't sound like somebody's coming down with the beast hood then I don't know what does a small music box received from a young Yarnum girl plays a song shared by her mother and father inside the lid is a small scrap of paper perhaps an old message two names can be made out however faintly Viola and Gascoigne oh shit yeah, you're feeling it too, aren't you? Remember Father Gascoigne who helped us take out the cleric beast? Well, he's the father of this young girl, and he's not coming home from the hunt. Um, and so the mom went out to find him, and he forgets his family sometimes. So it looks like our, you know how I mentioned when we took down the cleric beast that even the hunters aren't immune to the bloodborne disease. Well, there's also a chance that our buddy Gascoigne here may have it as well. Oh, that hurt. And here's our favorite troll with the statue again. But of course, Saw Spear, I mean, they, they have no way of stopping it. So we're going to make our way back down into the aqueduct. 
and see if we can't find another route to the Cathedral Ward. And hopefully this time you guys don't hear my stomach growling as I did go and get myself some food in between the last fade cut to now. Now, this looks like a bunch of corpses here, but I mentioned earlier, this is bait. Bunch of corpses, little shiny object right in the middle. Whoa, we got a shadow of somebody right here, don't we? Oh, and there he is up there. You can see him with another shiny object. Um, I may have to make my way over there here in a little bit and see if I can figure out what that is. But for right now, we're going to avoid the obvious bait. Because if I recall, it's nothing special and nothing worth what's coming next. Eat rocks, birds. Oh, whoa, we got somebody here. Oh, ow, ow. Oh, God. So our little corpse friends here look a lot like our corpse back there. And uh, if we were to go... Oh, don't... No, 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 now it's not the time, dude. Come on. Stupid fucking controller that picks up on my, my movements and makes gestures sometimes, man. I told y'all it would happen. I either, ge I either accidentally gesture when I'm not supposed to or I gesture in the middle of a fight. But, uh, yeah, these little corpse guys down here, don't let them hit you. Uh, nothing good comes of that. I mean, obviously, nothing good comes of getting hit in this game. It, what I said is kind of a no-duh statement, but... These guys hit real hard, and when you're a low level, if you let them catch you, it's bad. They can also puke green slime on you. Oh, and, you know, you can just miss. Okay, he's dead. Let's go check over here. Oh, look at that. Another one. But not too much of a problem. Okay, we got another bloodstone shard, so we can upgrade our weapons here in a little bit. Oh, come on. Learn how to throw, dude. Yeah, that charged attack was a little overkill for that bird, but it is what it is. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this down there, but there's a giant pig. Um, we're not going to fuck with that right now. We're just going to go up this ladder. And that brings us here. Now, before we cross this little bridge, which, there's the Great Bridge over there, I believe. Yeah, yeah, if my, okay, if my, my internal map is correct. That is the Great Bridge over there. And so this bridge should lead us to the Cathedral Ward as well. But before we cross it, here's this little shortcut. And this little shortcut takes us back. If I recall, yep, this is the door I tried to open earlier and couldn't. And there's our two troll friends up there. And then our central Yarnum lamp is just on the other side of the Great Bridge here. So yeah, that's the bridge. That's the where the cleric beast attacked us. So that should be the cathedral ward in that area over there. And so if we cross this bridge down here, we should be able to get in. I really need to upgrade my attire soon, too. Um, this starting out... 
you know, attire, armor, whatever you want to call it, is only going to carry me so far before we start to run into some problems. Uh-oh. Oh, man, that hurt. Wow, that fireball did fuck all, aside from annoy a couple of people, didn't it? Oh, we got our blood vial back. Alright, time to fess up. Which one of you just threw that at me? I'm going to assume it's you, big. Oh! That's what I get for shit talking. Alright, come on. Come on. Oh, we got the visceral attack that time. So this little ladder here should drop us back to where our little friend the pig was. Oh, that hurt. Come on. Come on. Stop it. Hit him. There we go. Oh, man. Blood vials. Yep. Can never have enough of those. I can only carry 20 right now at any given time, but any extras I pick up go to a storage in the Hunter's Dream, and then when I die or when I go in and out of the dream or re reawaken or anything like that, um, it fills it back up with ones from your storage. And the same goes for Quicksilver bullets and I believe most usable items. I could be wrong, though. Got some cold blood dew. And we got the Saw Hunter badge. Saw Hunter badge. Badge crafted long ago at the workshop. Attest to one's prowess as a hunter of beast. The workshop is gone, and no group recognizes this meaningless badge. Except for the messengers in the bath, who understand its profundity. Certain things can only be entrusted with a hunter in possession of this badge. Or so they believe. The Saw Hunter badge allows us to buy the starting weapons. So, earlier, when we were allowed to pick one of the weapons to start with, well, if you picked the wrong one, the Saw Hunter badge allows you to go back and pick a. not pick, but purchase a new one with Blood Echoes. We don't really need it, but it's always a fun thing to pick up. Try to collect as many badges as possible. Like it's fucking Pokemon. Alright. Come here. Hopefully we can get the visceral attack. There we go. Like I said, it's a skill you gotta get down if you want to be good at this game. Oh, didn't need to throw that rock, did I? Now, the ones with the long spears here are a lot more dangerous than the other ones. But, you know, not that dangerous when you figure out how to do the parry. So. Bold Hunter's Marks. Well, that's nice. If we need to reawaken anew, we can always use those again. Uh, this poor bastard got caught up by those two beasts and cornered. Alright. Alright. Let's continue on. Let's see if we can go track down Gascoin and bring him home. I know his daughter wants to see him.
And Gascoin has lost it, apparently. Now, there's a reason we kept this threaded cane. And it's because there's a really easy way to beat Father Gascoin in this fight by hiding on the side of these gravestones where he can't touch you. And then just smacking him around. Don't get too close. But yeah, you need the whip to do this, otherwise you're not going to have the reach. And then he'll just fuck you up. So Gascoin doesn't want to go home back to his daughter peacefully. Let's see if we can make his ass go home. So gas coins obviously in a bad state. <laughs> and he's also aware of our little tactic here. Now normally if I was smarter, I would have equipped the small music box before walking in here like a genius. But uh I didn't do that. And uh yeah, I'm paying the price for it. Normally, you can take that small music box and play it to make him remember his family, and he'll pause for a moment, and then you can, you know, do something about it. But, uh... Oh! Oh, man, he psyched me out there. He's like, no cheesing the boss. Oh, come on. And... Oh, no. That's bad. That's bad. He transformed. Oh, God. Run. Run. He can smash the gravestones now, so what we have to do is run over here. Wait for him to pick a side of this tree. And then get him stuck in it. Well, normally this works. Oh! Oh, come on. No. Leave me alone. Man, I am having the hardest time setting this up. It's because I'm recording. It's always what it is. Oh, that was just dumb, and I just died. All right, I'll see you guys here in just a moment. All right, and I'm back. Uh, I cannot fucking believe I died to Father Gascoin while cheesing him. I look like a punk now. But this time I at least equipped the tiny music box, so we're not going to have the same problems. I do also hate how the bullet sometimes... Oh, no! What are you doing? And, uh, I messed up. I should have used that music box when he was closer. If you use it too many times, you get that beast mode a little bit faster. Like, now. Alright. Run over here. Get here, get here, get here, get here. Heal up. Get him to follow me. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. My blood echoes back. Ah, oh, I hate the range he has sometimes, man.
So, um, yeah, there are definitely more fair ways to fight him than this, but I figured this way out the first time I played the game, and I've just done it since then. No, you stop being an animal. You need to go home and see your daughter. Ah, saw that coming. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, I hate the reach he has. It's just ridiculous. Like, he's got longer reach than my whip does. No, you know you don't. It's like being at a zoo where, like, the bear can get to you. <laughs> and you're just seeing how far you can stick your finger in front of its face before it bites it off. Oh, or it can move around the other side of the cage. Luckily there, I didn't just roll back into him. I've, I've done that before. Oh, and Father Gascoin is... Uh, Prey slaughtered. Uh, oops. We were just trying to calm him down to send him back home, but... Uh, I think we killed him. In fact, it's more than a think. I know we killed him. Uh, that's... That's not great. Oh. Sorry, dude. Um, little girl just lost her dad. I mean, he may have been an animal, but that was her dad. Um, on the bright side, she hasn't lost her mom. Red jeweled brooch. And I would say that. <laughs> Little girl's lost both her parents. Um, her mom died here. It looks like she found gas coin. Um, lots of blood here. No telling if gas coin is the one that killed her himself during his madness or if she was killed by the beast and that's why he was just in here chopping on their bodies long after they were dead when we got here. But one way or another, that little girl's lost both of her parents. The Red Jeweled Brooch. A woman's bright red brooch, engraved with the name Viola. Yep, that's her. Perhaps the jewel is a gift from a hunter <laughs> named Gascoigne. Used to change into a blood uh, droplet blood gem that fortifies any weapon. With the proper workshop tool, various weapons may be fortified. So we can use it to make a gem to fortify our sweet handy-dandy saw spear. But, uh... Yeah, that, that sucks for that little girl, losing her mom and her dad at the same time. Um, unfortunately for us, right now we don't have really any good news for her, and so she's safe in that house. Let's just, let's just not tell her, okay? That's going to be my secret with you guys, all right? Y'all don't say shit to the little girl. I won't say shit to the little girl. We'll pretend like we never found her parents, and then, you know... We can write it off to ourselves 50 years from now when we've forgotten about how all this transpired. That, oh yeah, her dad and her mom actually finally made it home and the little girl was fine and it wasn't a big issue. And 3F John certainly didn't kill both of her parents and then leave her to die in the cold world by herself because that would just be a horrible fucking thing to do. Anyways, we've gotten here. We have a little bit more stuff to clear out now that we've killed Father Gascoigne. But we got the Erden Chapel Key. And there's a big gate right up there. So we're going to move on and make our way in there for a moment before we uh, wind up for today. Open the gate with the Erden Tomb Key.
Seriously, though. Hey, you guys looking at me? Seriously. Hey. We don't tell anybody that 3F John murdered that little girl's parents. Well, murdered the one. The other one was dead when we got here. We don't tell. We got a chest over here and a shiny little piece of lore right here. Let's see what it says. The Bergenworth spider hides all manner of rituals and keeps our lost master from us. A terrible shame. It makes my head shudder uncontrollably. So if this is the home of the healing church, then the Bergenworth spider hides manners of rituals from the healing church and it keeps their master away from them. That's a problem. Because if we need the healing church's help to seek the pale blood, we're going to have to find out who this master is, who these ritual are, rituals are, and whatever the hell the Bergenworth spider may be. For now, let's open this chest and knock over everybody's books. What do we have here? The Blood Gem Workshop Tool. A misplaced workshop tool from the Hunter's Dream. The hunter who retrieves this can fortify weapons by kneading blood gems into them. Blood gems add properties to weapons when used to fortify them, as blood defines an organism. So we will use that to make the little blood jewel, uh, use it to fortify our weapon and add this little blood jewel to it. And we're just, we're going to smash this brooch that we never actually found, that we're sure, certainly a shit not going to tell a little girl about, right? 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 Good. Alright, let's keep moving. Oh my god, what is wrong with your hands? And here we are. We are made it to the Cathedral Ward. Go ahead and light this lamp up. Now we can go in and out. And I see that we have someone over here who is creepy as hell. Um, God, that thing is so fucking creepy. Hey, creepy person, who are you? Hmm? Oh, you must be a hunter. Very sorry. The incense must have masked your scent. Good, good. I've been waiting for one of your ilk. These hunts have everyone all locked up inside. Waiting for it to end. It always does. Always has, you know. Since forever. But it won't end nicely. Not this time. Even some folks hiding inside are going by it. The screams of women folk, the stench of blood, the snarls of beasts. None of them's too uncommon now. Yarnum's done for, I tell ya. But if you spot anyone with their wits about them, tell them about this here Erden Chapel. They'll be safe here. The incense wards off the beasts. Spread the word. Tell them to come on over. If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> so, this guy has a pretty damn good idea. Let's go back and let's find all of the people that we've talked to that we think we can help. And let's see if we can get them to come here to the Cathedral Ward. 
Well, I guess technically this is Erden Chapel, and the entire area is the Cathedral Ward. But nonetheless, let's see if we can get them to come here to Erden Chapel, and we can build ourselves a little click. A group of friends to survive the end of the world with, because apparently this hunt is never ending according to that weird guy right over there. <laughs> okay, so as of right now, though, I need to call it a part. We'll go back and we'll round up everybody here in a little bit. And so, I will see you guys in the next part of Bloodborne. This is 3F John, and new parts come out each and every Wednesday. So, I will see you next time.